Hello, Brian Knowlton back with another super cool slide drill tutorial. In this tutorial, we will cover the sequence of operation of a heat pump defrost control board. We have an ICM board here, and this one is a carrier board. And this here is a schematic which will cover the majority, 95% of the units out there operate the way that we're going to cover today. The main consideration is if you're working on a rudder or a ream, those operate backwards. But this will cover 90%, 95% of the ones out there. The first thing you're going to notice on our board is we have our thermostat control terminals. This, these are fed from the indoor thermostat. On the carrier, they're located here. On the ICM, they are located here. Now our designations are R, C, O, Y, and W. On the carrier, we have a W2 instead of a W. Don't get too caught up in the, 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 the nomenclature doesn't exactly line up. I mean, if, if we only have a W2 and there's not a W1, we know that it's the same designation on both boards. So what happens is our, our terminal is always energized with 24 volts. The C is always energized, it's always our common. These two are always uh, have power. Now our O, the O controls the reversing valve from the indoor thermostat. On a call for cooling, the O is energized. On a call for heating, the O is not energized. Next we have the Y. Um, when there is a call for cooling or heating, the Y will be energized uh, in both instances. And W, W is energized from the board whenever it goes into a defrost cycle. It, it sends a signal back uh, to the thermostat, which then feeds, feeds a signal over to the air handler, telling it to turn on the emergency heat. Up here, we have our condenser fan terminals. Now the condenser fan, this is a normally open set of uh, contacts in here. On this board, it's located here. On this board, it is located here. This is the relay. These are where the, the two wires connect. On this one, here is where our two wires connect. Now what this does, this can tur turns on the condenser fan motor when there is a, a call for heating or cooling, but in the event when a defrost cycle is initiated, uh, these, this is no longer allows uh, electricity to flow through the, to the condenser fan motor. Now what happens is when there is a call for, let's start off with a call for cooling. On a call for cooling, the O is energized, the Y is energized, the board checks the pressure switches. It looks for continuity through any pressure switches. If you don't have pressure switches, that's fine. This, this right here would just be a jumper wire, and this right here would just be a jumper wire. But there should be continuity through the pressure switches at all time. If there is a low pressure condition where there's low on Freon, the low pressure switch would open. Or if there's a high pressure switch, or a high pressure condition, the uh, high pressure switch would open. That happens in the event that there's a restriction or for instance, the condenser fan uh, fails to operate. So on a call for cooling, the O, the Y energize, the board checks all the pressure switches, making sure that all that's good. If everything checks out, it energizes the contactor. Now a lot of boards have a five minute uh, delay on brake function, which means once the unit turns off, um, or once it satisfies cooling or heating, it will not allow this, this to come on for five minutes. Um, your board is individual whether or not it has that function or not. But if you turn it on and nothing happens, give it that five minutes to make sure that you're not in that uh, timeout period. Call for cooling, the O and Y energize. The contactor, once everything else is met, the contactor energizes, turning on the compressor. And then the reversing valve, that determines whether or not the unit is actually heating or cooling. If we have voltage at the old term O terminal, it will be cooling. If we do not, it will be heating and the board handles all of that. Now on the call for heating function, the, the Y is the only one that is energized. Now of course the R and C always have uh, their, their low voltage. So on a call for Y, once again, it goes through the same set of functions. Pressure switches, make sure that we're good and we're good. If all that checks out, the contactor energizes. On heating, the outdoor system becomes the evaporator. Um, and what happens, of course, is it gets really cold. Now, the defrost thermostat's function 
is any time that outdoor coil is below 32 degrees, this defrost thermostat starts counting that time. Now the, the reason that's important is each one of these boards have a defrost function. This one's 30, 60, or 90 minutes here, and this one's 30, 60, or 90 minutes here. This one's a set of dip switches. This one here uses a little jumper. We set that, let's say for instance it's set on 60 minutes. When this unit operates in the heating mode for 60 minutes, it goes into a defrost function. Now this time is cumulative. So if it runs for 15 minutes, and then the heating satisfies and turns off for an hour, then turns off for another 15 minutes, that continually counts that, that cumulative time until it reaches our preset defrost time. Now, if we want to test our board to see if it's working or not, what we can do is there is a, a test function. Here it's called speed up. On this one it's called test. All we do is we jumper this out. You can just use a screwdriver or, or anything that will conduct uh, electricity through there. You test that, that's going to speed up our function by roughly 300%, or um, 300 times that is. So instead of it taking 60 minutes, it's, it's going to take, you know, just a couple of seconds and it'll it'll go through all the functions to make sure it works properly. And that defrost, once again, what happens when it goes into a defrost, as soon as it starts, the, as soon as we satisfied our 60 minute time frame, for instance, where if it was set in 60, it would turn off the outdoor condensing fan motor, the compressor continues to run, the reversing valve is then energized, at the same time the W terminal is energized, telling the indoor unit to bring on the secondary heat source. Well, some of defrost units have a defrost thermostat that tells tell us when it's good, others just do it for a predetermined time frame. doesn't really matter uh, which one it uses, it's just as long as you understand what happens there. This concludes our tutorial on the sequence of operation for a heat pump defrost board, but please stay tuned while I introduce you to the super cool slide rule. It is the coolest tool in air conditioning. You've got to have one. It'll save you lots of time, which saves you lots of money. Thanks for watching. I'd like to take a minute to introduce you to the coolest tool in the HVAC industry. Historically, technicians have carried four or five different slide rules. You have one for R22, one for R410A, one for metal duct sizing, one for flexible duct sizing, and yet others for diagnostics or troubleshooting. Thankfully, those days are gone. This one tool will allow you to charge a system with R22 or R410A and either the superheater subcooling method. The back cover contains required formulas. It has capacitors, rules, and practices, a wet bulb conversion chart, how to perform computations on series or parallel circuits, an electric heat strip guide, a complete system troubleshooting diagnostic chart, and how to troubleshoot compressors in TXV. Inside is packed with even more information. It performs sizing of both metal and flexible duct. It has the only direct reading conversion from smooth metal to insulation line metal we've ever seen. The majority of technicians have never been taught that if the insulation is on the inside of the ductwork, you cannot size it with a regular duct calculator. It has step-by-step -step directions for determining airflow through a gas furnace, electric furnace, or an air conditioning unit. It has pressure drop multipliers for duct work, as well as recommended velocities. And finally, the scanning of this QR code gives instant access to over 100 tutorials to assist the technician with every test and repair imaginable. You owe it to yourself, as well as your customers, to own this tool. It's less than $20, including shipping. The Supercool will save you countless hours of frustration when troubleshooting units. Log on to our website and get one today, and I promise you will be a better technician tomorrow. And remember, every technician is only as good as their tools. Thanks for watching.